Now in the next question that is 31 which is related to magnetic field due to a long wire. Two identical long conducting wires AOB and COD are placed at right angle to each other with one above another such that O is their common point for the two. That means they have been arranged in the form of a plus. You understand? Now they will be creating magnetic field. The wires carry current I1 and I2. If they are creating magnetic field that will also be mutually perpendicular to each other. Now point P is lying at a distance D from O along a direction perpendicular to the plane containing the wires. If let us suppose the wires are something like this, if you are making a plus sign, then from the point of intersection you can see it is coming out at a distance D. Say one wire is like this, another wire is car carrying a current this way. So if you see the magnetic field creation, this wire may be if it is in this direction, then the field due to this wire that will be in downward direction if you are outside. So whatever it is the two fields are in mutually perpendicular direction. So all you have to do to find out the total magnetic field, you have to calculate the Pythagoras of the magnetic fields created by the two wires I1 and I2. Now what is the magnetic field due to a long wire that is mu naught I by 2 pi R or 2 pi D here. So you see the Pythagoras, in fact you can see this is the only formula which is containing the uh, term for Pythagoras. So I will be marking option 4 for this particular question and that explains question 31. Now let us explain question number 32 that is the next question. In the next question that is question 32 as it reads a thin semicircular conducting ring PQR it has been given to you in the diagram PQR is the ring of radius small r that has been mentioned here is falling with its plane vertical as it has been shown here. You see it is falling in a vertical direction and here a um, horizontal magnetic field is there. It is falling with its plane vertical in a horizontal magnetic field B as shown in figure as I explained here. B has been written so it is going perpendicular into the plane of this board and cross is indicating it is going inside. Now the potential difference developed across the ring when its speed is v between these two ends you have to find out what is the potential difference. Now first of all remember that it is a question of motional EMF and the actual length is not here rather the perpendicular you can say projection of the length that matters here. So here I will be taking just the diameter of the ring for the purpose of calculating potential difference and BLV as you know this is the potential difference. What about the direction? If you see if this wire is falling down, I think that the positive charge that is also falling down and if you apply right hand rule, the velocity is in downward direction and magnetic field is inside. So if you take the V cross B, then you will find that the positive charges will have the tendency to get accumulated on the side of R. So R will be at higher potential. First of all, remember that R will be at higher potential and the potential difference will be simply B L V L means 2 R. So the most appropriate answer for this question comes out to be option number 4 and that explains question number 32. Now let us discuss the next question that is question number 33. Now in the next question that is question 33 which is based on the expression of a transformer, a transformer having efficiency of 90% is working on 200 volt that means this is a primary value given to you and 3 kilowatt this is primary power and this is primary voltage power supply. If the current in the secondary coil is 6 ampere that is obvious that it is data of secondary side the voltage across the secondary coil and the current in the primary coil respectively are this is what you have to calculate. Now see if you calculate the secondary voltage first you calculate what is the secondary power. R is equal to voltage into current I can use. Secondary power will be just the 90% of you see the input power that means this is 2700 watt. This is a secondary voltage you are supposed to calculate and the current in secondary is 6 ampere. So divide 2700 by 6 so that will be giving you the value of secondary voltage that comes out to be you have 6 4 24 3 4 50 volt you can say. This is a secondary, this is the first part of the answer. You find that several options are like that. Now they are demanding what is the current in the primary coil. 
now current in the primary means i can use power upon voltage because primary power has been given primary voltage also has been given to you this is 3000 divided by this is 200 so that makes it uh, 15 ampere so 450 volt and 15 ampere option 2 will be the correct option for this question 33 now let us discuss the next question that is question 34 now in the next question that is question 34 it is light with an energy flux of 25 into 10 to the power 4 watt per meter square you can also understand this is the intensity of the light which has been given to you it falls on a perfectly reflecting surface of course the intensity will be coming back if you treat that light is consisting of photons so naturally it will be exerting pressure and ultimately force on the reflecting surface if the surface area is 15 centimeter square then the average force exerted on the surface is this is the question now you see this is a very standard formula that intensity if it is divided by the speed of light then that gives you pressure understand and if it is something like a particle hitting it then coming back so change in momentum it will be twice of that so this is the net pressure which will be acting on that and if you multiply it by the surface area then that will be equal to the force you are expected to calculate so in this question you see this intensity value 25 into 10 to the power 4 is to be substituted area value should be taken in meter this 15 centimeter square should be written as 15 into 10 to the power minus 4 and c is basically 3 into 10 to the power 8 if you substitute all these values and calculate you will find that the second option that is 2.50 into 10 to the power minus 6 newton that will be the answer coming to this particular question now let us explain next question that is question 35 now in the next question 35 which is based on wave optics that is diffraction at single slit a beam of light of lambda 600 nanometer that is 6000 angstrom from a distant source what is the meaning of distant source distant source means the wave front that will be plane as it is there in your syllabus also source falls on a single slit one millimeter wide and the resulting diffraction pattern is observed on a screen two meter away that is the capital d value has been given the distance between first dark fringes on the either side this is another way of saying that is they are demanding what is the width of the central bright you understand the distance between the dark fringe on either side is equivalent to say that they are demanding what is the width of the central bright the standard formula is 2 lambda capital d upon small d this is what you have to calculate in this question for the value of lambda you have to write down 600 into 10 to the power minus 9 because this is nanometer given to you capital d is nothing but this 2 meter and this is small d is this 1 millimeter that is to be written as 10 to the power minus 3 meter if you solve everything you will be getting this answer that is 2.4 mm that will be the answer to this particular question 35 now let me explain next question that is question 36 